Hi, I'm Evelyn Moses Cunningham, and welcome to the Feel Better Every Day podcast, helping you connect with and take better care of yourself and create a life you don't need to retreat from. Welcome to episode 16 of the Feel Better Every Day podcast. Today's guest is the delightful Dr. Dina Glauberman, author of The Joy of Burnout, Image Work and so many other gorgeous books. And she's talking about finding joy through burnout, image work, gratitude and so much more. I'd love as you listen for you to think about your own experiences of burnout or near burnout and recovery. And um, I hope you enjoy the episode. So welcome, Dr. Dina Glauberman. Thank you so much for joining me on the Feel Better Every Day podcast. I'm really excited to be here. I think it's such a great idea. Really. Uh I'm so honoured to be talking to you because your book, The Joy of Burnout, massively changed my life when I'd been signed off in my last office job back in 2004 and the idea that there could be something positive behind all the anxiety or the unprocessed trauma or the burnout and it then led me on this whole new journey and then I got to interview you last year for Psychologies and you've just been so lovely. Um, you're known for founding Skiros, the um, retreat in Greece, and also for many, many wonderful books, including most recently Image Work. Um, what, like, how long have you been doing all this and what are you working on at the moment? <laughs> how long have I been doing all this? Should I say um, um, 50 years? Wonderful. <laughs> 50 years or more. <laughs> Doing different things, but I think the, um, I think what the, the, the things that I, uh, are, are kind of basic is one is the area of the imagination. I've yeah. always been interested in opening yourself up to your vast imagination understanding who you are, finding out your own truth. I was always interested in the truth. And I, I saw that the social truth that mediated by the language was going to give you something very partial. And the thing about imagery is that it goes really both personal and universal. And so that was yeah. always very exciting because it took me through all my difficult times. So image work is a, is a big area for health and healing, for creative things, for understanding your relationship to life, all the things that life's about yeah. I've been injury for. And it's really, I'd say, brought me where I am now. And the other thing is burnout. I burnt out as well. Didn't know I'd burnt out until 10 years later or something. Yeah. I heard the word and I said, ah, that was what it was. And that's when I realized that what people said about burnout, too much work, no life, uh, work balance, it was just, not true because for me, I'd I'd always worked too hard. I'd, and I'm sure you did, and, <laughs> and no life balance. And and as long as I was wholehearted, I was fine. It was when I became divided against myself that became a problem. And that's how I wrote the book Joy of Burnout because somehow you have to. Find, it's almost like your organism is standing up for joy, saying yeah. you can't do this thing. You can't drive yourself to destruction. Uh, it, you need to find your joy again. And and I burned out. I didn't get my full energy back for 10 years. So wow. seven years, seven years, I'd say seven yeah. years. Yeah. Um, and the other thing I'm very into is community, is, yes. is uh, creating uh, Skiros. It, it, the first and foremost thing was that people would come to a place where they could be themselves in a community uh, that, which I call a soul community, because it values you for who you are and who you're becoming and not for your role as Wonderful. in a, a traditional community. I was just talking to one of the um, Italian men here. I'm, I'm in Italy right now. And he's, okay. saying, he's saying he can't go back to his hometown to live there because he won't be able to go to the hairdresser he wants to go to, the butcher he wants to go to, or anything else he wants to go to because 
there are there are rules about that's his uncle and he has to do that and that's the, you know so these traditional communities they are wonderful for love and care but not if you're a little bit different absolutely so, yeah. you know so that's why i call a soul community and i've also started something here in Puglia, which is called aurora and also running courses but also creating community and people can find out about the they can access links in the show notes so they can sign yeah. up and find right. out more um right. yeah. what would you like to tell me about if you had all the time and energy in the world what would be your ideal self-care both for basic self-care and for connecting with the divine if that's something you do in the morning yes uh, so that was quite an interesting question you know so I do have this thing, which I, uh, but, but I'll tell you the, the ideal, I suppose, and now I'll tell you what I really do. So I do have this thing that I learned from the shamans, that before you get up in the morning, you say, thank you for my life. And I, I've started also saying, when I remember to do it, thank you for life, because I think my life is like my personal life, but thank you for life. Thank you yeah. for, for the bigger picture of life. Okay. Then I'm in the ideal, I jump out of bed, I take a shower. This is this is <laughs> what I watch people do. They rush out and they take a shower and then they're all, you know, gotten rid of all the, uh, the tiredness and everything. Then I would do my exercises after drinking only water. Uh-huh. Hot <laughs> and, or cold or room temperature? Uh, just whatever's available, yeah. Room yeah. And... Then I would do my meditation, and my meditation is not the normal breathing one, but it's one about aligning your mind, heart, and soul with your, mm -hmm. well, your mind, emotion, and body with your soul, and then, uh, and envisioning the day and so on. It's a, it's a way of setting yourself up for the day. Then I would always walk to the cafe, and then the, and then. It, I mean that's ideal, real, and everything else. You have to go to the cafe, and then and and it's it's partly because I live on my own, and you go out and you meet the world. And there is some research that says that the people that you meet, um, that those connections, yeah, are more important than I've heard than diet and exercise are yeah. more important the partner at home it's a really big deal to have that feeling of community around yeah. you even people you hardly know but you just say good morning how are you yeah so i do that also the the morning lights meant to be good for you and then i would take a longer brisker walk with and have my fitbit to check blah 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 then i'd come back to have my tea and my breakfast okay and the basic principle, which I actually do do really, is that you have to set yourself up to meet the day and yes. set yourself up to meet the day. And I, and I learned this when I had small children, that if I got up and I hadn't done that for myself, then I'd feel pushed around by their needs and demands. Yeah. But if I had found my little center and felt I knew who I was, you know, because I had to remember that every morning. Maybe yeah. everybody does remember who I am. Once I was settled, then it it, it worked. Yeah. You know, then I could meet the kids with yeah. myself instead of feeling like a victim of what they Wonderful. want. So that's the sort of ideal thing. Now, the real thing is, well, sometimes I say something positive and sometimes I forget. Uh, I, I sort of struggle out of bed. I don't know that I jump out of bed unless I've sort of laying there for too long and I realize I'm going to be late. I almost never take a shower. I, I mean, this is why this is my big ideal thing. I think it's a really good thing to do. People always love it. But for me, uh, I'm one of those people that find transitions difficult. Uh -huh. So the idea of stepping into a shower when I've just got up is beyond yeah is beyond my, um, uh, I don't know, my, whatever, my ability to do. Yeah. So I've only done it a few times when I really was in a, you know, I had to do it and go somewhere. 
Um, I have started to do exercises in the morning. And the way I started to do that was my trainer gave me a three minute exercise. And I said to myself, I can do three minutes. Wonderful. And it's now gone up to nine minutes. I just trained, I checked it, but I'm still doing it. She used to keep telling me, do this, do that. And then I'd come back. She said, did you do it? And I'd look at her and we'd both laugh. <laughs> so of course not. But now I do do <laughs> and it does help and then I do part of my meditation uh, necessarily the whole thing but the thing I always do is the thing that we talked about and yep. is the visioning of the day and what that's about is I vision at the end of the day being uh, happy what am I happy about or what do I feel good about and how did I get there and um the end of the day, feeling bad. What's the bad feeling? How did I get there? And that really sets me up to see what attitude I need for the day. So, for example, what I haven't said to you is before I did this podcast, I did that bit because I do that before everything I do. So my positive ending was that I, I kind of tuned into you and trusted you, Eve, which I do. And then I relaxed and it came out as it did. The negative one was I tried to present myself as something or other that sounded good. Uh huh. And that was a that was ended me up feeling bad. Yeah. So, so it clarified to me what I needed to do. And it, very generally, whenever I do that before a workshop, before anything, it always turns out that it's not about teaching as much as I should or but it's always about the connection yeah when the connection then it works well that's why it is for me anyway absolutely so, that that's so wonderful and the giving yourself permission then to oh, relax yeah, into that's right. yeah that's right now I, I forgot to say I do go to the cafe that that is in my real yeah morning as well I I occasionally take this longer walk but depends on on and how busy I feel, and I eat breakfast. And all my life, it's taken me three hours. Even when I was most busy, yes. it's taken me three hours between when I get up and when I sit down at my desk. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many people that that's like for. Partly, I think um, I once had a stress test which said that my, um, my uh, uh, what's it called? Um, Cortisol? Yeah, my is it the cortisol? Yeah, is too high at night and too low in the morning. So I oh wow, takes, okay. And it takes me time. Yeah, to get there. But whether or not I would be going for a walk, yes. or just sitting and staring with my tea, it seemed to be three hours. I think yes. sometimes it's a bit less now, but yeah, I'm not the sort. Yeah, I have writer friends who like jump out of bed have their tea at the desk and they're writing already for the first three hours no it's not I, I can't do it I can't I, unless I have a deadline and then and then <laughs> when you have a deadline everything yeah. changes as you know but otherwise three hours you know is my so if anybody thinks they're slow I'm probably slower. Than I you. love that because it takes me a while I have a really kind of long morning routine to make yeah. me feel like I can handle other humans. I can deal with humaning. Um, so I, yeah. I'm i not one of those people who leaps out of bed and is immediately. <laughs> and I think the other thing is it's my time. Yeah. You know, and if I think, well, I have to go to the cafe in the morning and I'm going to have to do my shopping and this, that and the other thing, I get anxious. Yeah. I need to have some time. And actually, this originated, I just remembered from an, uh, um, am I taking too long? Not, at all. Okay. Not okay. at all. So it, I, I, many, many years ago, when I couldn't get out of it, because, and I would put the snooze alarm on every five or 10 minutes for an hour. Yeah. And I worked out that it was because in my picture, when I got out of bed, I would be bent over with my work because I was um, very busy then. So why would you want to get out of yeah. bed? Yeah. And at that time, I promised myself that I wouldn't do anything before I had a cup of tea. It was very yeah. simple. 
And that cup of tea got longer and longer. Excellent. But that enabled me to get out of bed because I was getting out of bed straight to work. Yeah. It was a space. Brilliant. It was a space for me. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that would benefit from that. Definitely. Definitely. So what about later in the day and before bed? What would be your ideal and what is the reality? Well, I don't know what my ideal is for the rest of the day. I'm sort of more ideal in the morning. No, <laughs> in the morning, a lot of my self care is the imagery. So, yeah. so what happens is, uh, as I said, I'll do that visioning exercise, and I'll do it as I said just before uh, 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 anything I'm doing, like a workshop or whatever. Yeah, I have an exercise which I love, which is called golden hair. Mm-hmm you do is you have two mountains which are two opposite things you tell yourself like I'm no good I've never been any good or I'm so fabulous I can heal the sick and raise the dead and then and then you walk down <laughs> the golden path in the middle and you breathe you have a walking meditation and you get what the real truth is mm. present moment wonderful moment as Thich Nhat Hanh used to say and um Thich Nhat Hanh is a, is a Vietnamese book yeah people that don't know and um who I loved he was yeah and um so if I get stuck into stuff I might say I you know I just don't know what to do now I'm going to walk the golden path so I go into my negative and positive stuff and then I walk the golden path I also do that if I wake in the night and can't sleep sometimes yeah. if something's bothering me I might do the golden path or the simplest thing is I have an image of the light behind me, which is the light of the soul, yeah. or whatever you want to call it. And you just step back into the light and you breathe. And then something is different. Then you see things differently. Or I have a consultant sitting across and I say to the son, I'm feeling really awful. I don't know what to do about this. Can you help me? Uh, depending on who, what I need help with, I'm yeah. different. Consultant. Then I change seats and become the consultant, and I look at myself and I have this question: What can you see about so and so they don't know about themselves? So I look at myself, get a sense. When I say look at myself, I look at the place I was sitting. Yes, before. yes. Who had some remnants of me yes. there, and I get a sense of it, and I and I give advice. So sometimes I might say, "I think you're fine. You're just getting worried about nothing." Or I might say, I think you're in a mess. <laughs> and this yeah. is what you have to do about it. So those are some of the things uh, that I, I don't find that works for me, that maybe works for most people, is that you get up and you do your work and you get everything done and you make sure to keep busy and you make sure your time is fully committed and then no harm is going to come to you. Um, I don't, I can't I do that. I think the world is realising that that is not the way forward. I think there's more and more about the importance of rest and yes. we're not machines. But it's not just rest. It's not about rest only. It's about coming back to myself, mm. sensing what's the right way forward. Because I do notice that people who do do that, they're very efficient. But when the time comes that they need to be creative yeah. and find a new way forward, that's more difficult because they're kind of more rigid in, yeah. in this thing of I have to get things done. Um, yeah. And by the way, when I work with other people, um, like like either work with someone like, like my um, as, assistant and my, my administrator or work in a group, I try to start with a check-in. Yeah. So, so we both have a check-in you know me and and my um administrator lynn we always start off with a check-in which begins i invite you to throw away what's on top of your mind and see what comes up from heart and soul and then oh, i love that it's really wonderful because you, you throw away all the blah 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 yeah blah blah yeah and you really get in touch we do that and then we send each other love yeah and we do all that and I think that is why we are still together after all these years, because, yeah. you know, I'm not a pin. And I also just like this weekend, I had a master class for my um, for the diploma in imagery. Yeah. Yeah. And 
And I said, let's start with a check-in. And yes. it's so important that we did that. It took a long time, but we were together and people felt supported. And it turned yeah. out had some difficult stuff happening. And for us to go straight into what we were doing would have missed that. Yeah. And one of the women just like was inspiring because she had just been told by the consultant that she had a tumor and he didn't find a tumor it was. Yeah. And she said to him, in order for me to be able to work with you and trust you, I'd like you to get an image of this tumor. From yeah. Her of this tool so she asked him to do image work basically yeah. because that would connect her to him and she would trust him and he mm. did brilliant and, and he gave her an image of yeah. uh, of the tumor which uh, she found a bit scary uh, yeah. but she felt connected to him so that was so interesting she couldn't just do the work of this is blah 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 she had yeah. to make a connection of and, and i think that is real self-care you know yeah and my experience of meetings where you don't do that is everybody comes with their stuff and if it's not good stuff you've had a bad time mm -hmm. or a time coming to work it all flies all around the place. yeah you know so uh, so that's really important to me I love that because it's self-care in relation to the people that yes. you're spending the day with yes it's, it, it, um it's, yeah and is there anything else like kind of in terms of winding down or anything else that you'd like to add about ideal and essential or? Okay, so so, so I, I think you were asking about the night routine. Yeah. Uh, uh, I was thinking about that, that I do try to finish working early, but that's probably because I'm, I'm, I'm hopeless at night. I just don't want to do it, you know, I'm done. Um, and I do try to eat early and not to eat afterwards, so uh -huh. I'm extremely unsuccessfully. Um, but I don't stay off the computer, as they say, stay off the screens. Because I'm in Italy right now for two months and so on, the people that I'm close to, a lot of them are not here. Yeah. I think connecting with people on Skype more important than not having. Yeah. So, so I spend the time on the screen very often with other people and that makes me feel part of the world of people that I care about and that care about me so I think that's really important wonderful and, so and the I, sound just went but you were saying about how you're on Skype with people and yeah, that's I'm more important. and it's more important to connect yeah. people that I care about rather than to stay off the screen absolutely you know, yeah so that, and then when I go to bed I tend to play a little um, um, audio of some kind, like a podcast or something, just briefly. It, I, I suppose it's the tradition of bedtime story. Yeah. Or something. I I never had those. I don't think my mother. My mother was uh, was an American. She uh, she came from uh, Jerusalem, and she. I, I think the concept of reading to the child didn't didn't cross her consciousness but 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 I think that thing of being able to listen yeah I don't I, I don't that's another thing I don't do as much as I would want to is read I used yeah. to read a lot more and now I tend to kind of listen and I'm sorry I, I'd like to get back to reading more actually okay but I mean they're different things aren't they they're it's a different I love that you're giving yourself that story time before bed yeah. in whatever yeah. form yeah I'd love to know what you'd be doing if you could go back 50 years or longer and send yourself some love and advice around self-care or anything else what oh, might that be okay that's a that's a good one because that's one of the things I do a lot in imagery is go yeah. somewhere else and look back Okay, so let me just, I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to do yeah. really it. Um, I'm going to go back to when I was in my 20s. Oh, you know, so I'm looking at her and I'm saying, oh, my God, you know, you're in a hurry, aren't you? And you and you always think you haven't got enough time and you're never going to accomplish what you're supposed to accomplish in life. And, um, and some of it is like really kind of great that you kind of left 
a country, came to England, wanted to explore the world, but some of it is like, you know, you're anxious a lot, you're depressed a lot, you don't feel good about yourself a lot. And I guess I want to say, slow down. Yeah. I just want to say, slow down. It's all there for you. It's all there for you if you slow down. And if you slow down, all those things that are important will occur to you. But when you're speeding around the place, you're doing a lot, you're accomplishing a lot, and you will go on to accomplish a lot of things, write a lot of books, start a center, do a lot of things that make a difference in life to other people. But the pace is unforgiving of yourself. And if I could start all over again with you, I'd do it all slow motion. Amazing. Thank you so much. Where can people find you online? I'm, I'll have the information in the show notes, but okay. what's your website? My website is dinaglauberman.com. Mm -hmm. And then you find things about the Centre here, Aurora, about Skiros, about my books. Yep. About um, um, your courses. My courses. I'm starting a course with online events, um, Introduction to Image Work in January really great course and then i'm doing one training course here in italy by the sea in may and then one in october which is a retreat and and the courses in i haven't done this training in italy yet but the ones here we turn away as many people as come because once people come here they never want to go <laughs> and we create community and people yeah say, great italian restaurants and and drink coffee in great cafes and and the groups are great also but if, if it wasn't here I'm not sure I'd be that popular so, <laughs> so I'm great. sure you would you're brilliant <laughs> oh, thank you so much I really appreciate thank you. this thank you so much Thank you for listening to the Feel Better Every Day podcast. As you listened to Dr. Dina Glauberman, I wonder if you asked yourself about your own experiences with burnout or near burnout. And I'd love to hear from you around how it impacted your self-care and um, what you do to minimise, avoid, recover, prevent, however you deal with it. We live in such a busy world. It's really challenging sometimes, but there are always things you can do. And I'd love to know which of the things you've heard today appeal and that you might try. So please leave a comment or rate, review, share all of the above. This episode, like all episodes so far, has been produced by me, your host, Eve Menezes Cunningham. And I am very much also looking forward to sharing next week's episode with um, my good friend, Kathy Bishop, who's a medical herbalist specialising in vaginal health. And she's also the author of Your Power Portal. So um, we're doing this issue to um, coincide with the hips and reproductive organs element of the Love Your Whole Self chakra journey that I'm running over on Substack and on my blog, which you can find at evemc.substack.com or selfcarecoaching.net. And I hope you'll find it beneficial um, learning about how you can work with your hips and your reproductive organs to support your sacral chakra in supporting you and helping to begin to ground all the work we've been doing these past few weeks. Looking forward to hearing from you and looking forward to sharing more next week.